Here we are, 6.30 in the fucking morning. They're washing away chalk. a uh, fucking again. Kyle's favorite fucking thing to do. Here we go. It's worth it to y'all, it's still worth it. It's worth it. It's gonna go back up. It's gonna go back up, Kyle. because you come out here and get everybody arrested for filming you wash this fucking chalk off that you're gonna stop being filmed fuck no fuck no at least he got a different fucking shirt on today god damn They love washing away these names. You like covering up for the police? Y'all enjoy covering up crimes against humanity? It's worth the money. It's worth it. It's worth it for you, Kyle. They up his uh they up his bond. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars for allegedly filming uh Kyle Saunders. Filming Kyle Saunders. That's what he did. Filming Kyle Saunders. Telling him that he's the racist that he is. And he is racist. He is racist. He is racist. 100% racist as fuck. Racist as fuck. Racist ass Kyle Saunders. Racist as fuck. And here this spray paint that they're talking about. Look at the spray paint that they're talking about. What's happening to this spray paint? Oh, oh, it come up. That's right, because it's chalk. So last week when fucking racist ass Rockford Orthopedic tried to go in court and say people spray painted their fucking property. First of all, it's not even spray paint, it's chalk. It is chalk. It's spray chalk. It comes right the fuck off. It's spray chalk. Then, they try to say it's their property. It's not their fucking property. Look at this. Running red in the fucking street. Red in the street. Red in the street. That's the blood. 
That's the blood that's on this city's fucking hands. Y'all covering up for a city that shot a 19 year old Hispanic child. He's a child. Child. And you're okay with that? Yeah? Yeah. Anything for a fucking check. Anything for a fucking check. For some money. Fucking sellout. What then? If it good? Good. version of an Uncle Tom or Coon is, even if I did, I couldn't say it. So I'm going to just say some ethnicity traitors here. Perfectly okay with covering up crimes against humanity for a paycheck. If it was his child, good. She said, good. No empathy, no sympathy, no solidarity. He said if it was his child, good. That is a shame. That is a fucking shame. Kyle is a fucking shame. He's a fucking racist. And he cry to the fucking police every time somebody catches ass on camera being the fucking racist ass white nationalist he is. Y'all don't have no morals. You think it make you a better person to just come to work and do what the fuck they tell you for a paycheck? Is that what y'all think? You think it makes you better people to do what these white folks tell you to do? Out here washing away the names of people that's been murdered by the police because white fucking nationalist Kyle Saunders told you to? one the most shameful of them all the most shameful of them all the most shameful of them all because he looks so proud to be doing it he take pride in that coming to work doing what these white men tell him to do he take pride in that shit. Coming to work. He said, this put food on the table and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of washing away these names. It put food on the table, right? And what'd you say if it was your son? 
6.30 in the fucking morning. 6.30 in the fucking morning. Got six people out here. Six people out here, including the overseer himself. Six workers, including the plantation overseer himself. Out here washing away truck at 6 30 in the fucking morning say hi to Simon everyone he hates being on camera he hates being on camera his name Simon and he hate being on camera so he gonna turn around and leave because he is 100% ashamed of himself. 100%. 100%. He don't never like being on fucking camera. You know you got fucking issues with what you got going on and what you doing with your fucking life when you turn away. You don't want to be held accountable for the shit you doing. Or what if it was your kid? What if it was your 19 year old son that got shot by the police? It don't matter? It don't matter to you? We know Kyle don't give a shit. Kyle don't give a shit at all because people that look like him are not subject to violence because the way they look. People with that basic ass Kyle fucking Saunders haircut. Number two up on the fucking board. They don't never gotta care about shit like this happening to them. He don't gotta worry about his kids. He don't never gotta worry about shit like this happening to him. What if it was your kid? What if it was your son? None of y'all? Only one motherfucker want to answer, the one that's prideful about the shit that he's doing, covering up murders. Helping this city out. To wash away the message about their crimes against humanity. For these white supremacists, like Kyle Saunders. For these white nationalists. What if it was your son? You look way too much like Kyle for this question to really hit, but what if it was your son? At least two of the folks we got up on these poles are white. Either killed by police or died in police custody under suspicious circumstances. So what if it was your child? What if it was your mother? What if Suzette Babbler was your mother? 
nothing. You just don't care. It's a paycheck to you too. It's a paycheck to you too. Just money. You don't give a fuck about these people's lives. The ones they had taken from them. Because it's just money to you. Just money to y'all. You're not slick, like. <laughs> and there go Kyle Saunders. That's his, his good deed for the day. Washing away the names of people that were murdered by officers in this city. Bringing out some people that got just enough melanin in them so he can hide the fact that the reasoning behind it is racism. The reasoning behind him coming out here, having people come out here, sometimes even involving himself, is racism. Upholding white supremacy upholding this system that we have in place that doesn't hold officers accountable, that allows for the mistreatment, terrorization, and murder of black and brown people. He found the right ones. Like I said, whatever the Hispanic or Latino version of uh, Uncle Tom is, that's what you have out here, race traitors, ethnicity traitors. And again, all for fucking chalk. And to reiterate, these people over here, this Rockford Orthopedic, this same fucking chalk that you seen was down here. I don't know what the white shit is. I think that's just part of the brick. But that little spray chalk came right up when they sprayed it with the fucking water. So for them to be over there talking about, look at this, look. Look at their sidewalk. Hold up. Let me see if I can't zoom in. Look at their sidewalk. What spray paint? Ain't no fucking spray paint. Ain't no fucking shit done to their, besides their fucking building. Bust down. Ain't no fucking damage done to their shit. We didn't come over and fucking crumble your foundation. Some people came over and fucking drew with chalk. And then y'all got fucking no contact orders. Because you don't want to be held accountable for when you came out and washed the fucking chalk away and got videotaped. And then people started complaining about how y'all was racist. You don't want to be held accountable for the shit that you did. Just like the city don't want to hold officers accountable for their fucking murders. So, I'm going to end this live, but just so y'all know where where they're sitting at. They're still washing away chalk. This business that's across the street, uh, at least four people in there went and got no contact orders against uh, various protesters. Uh, copy, paste. Copy, paste their whole fucking addendum. Copy, paste. About every single person. Every single person was in the same place at the same time doing the exact same thing, apparently. Writing the exact same thing in chalk. And they still granted it to them. Then we went to court. They tried to say that uh, they were spray painting their property. First of all, it wasn't spray paint. It was chalk. And it came off, obviously. And it's not their fucking property. The sidewalk is not their fucking property. You do not have a, a right to... Uh, violate other people's rights to peacefully protest by putting chalk down on the sidewalk just because you feel like 
that hurts your business. And then they told us, uh, oh, it's not a store, it's a, a healthcare facility. Okay, good, great. Because we have a right to protest at churches, healthcare facilities, and government buildings. And what are we at? City Hall. Oop, that's a government building. And what are you saying you are? A healthcare facility? Oop, that's protected too. So when we do finally go to court, and we do finally have a hearing, because they decided the last time that we went to court that they didn't want to proceed with the hearing, they were not ready, then they tried to lie and say that people are vandalizing their property, people spray painted their property. They tried to lie and say that we stood across the street and yelled at them, which it looks like there's nobody in there. So even if I am recording and talking in that general direction, it don't look like there's anybody even in there. So who the fuck would I be talking to? I ain't talking to nobody. But they tried to say we stand across the street and yell at them. And even the judge was like, okay, so that's not, I can't do shit about that. That would be a criminal matter. So if we was really standing out here, they called the police for chalk. If they went and got a no contact order and we did anything to violate that, the first thing they would drop everything and call the fucking police. Because they racist. Because they weaponize the fucking police against people. That's exactly what they do. So the reality is, that's a lie. Everything they fucking say is a lie. If people was really violating no contact orders, the whole point of you getting a no contact order is so you can try and criminalize us because nothing that we were doing to begin with was illegal. If we went over there and chalked all up and down the sidewalk and never went on their property, they would still call the police, and they have multiple times, the police would come out, say, this is not illegal, and go on about their fucking day. However, if they went and lied and made up some shit about how we were vandalizing their property and almost getting violent with the police, which yes, these are things that they said in their addendums to get these no contact orders to begin with, which are lies. But if they went and go went and uh, said those things and got the no contact orders and then we came over and then we started writing on the, the sidewalk with chalk and then we started, you know, uh, engaging with people outside of their store. If we did those things after they get a no contact order, then it's illegal then they can have something to arrest us for. So really none of this, they don't fear for their safety. They don't really feel like anybody's gonna do shit to them because nobody's, nobody's gotten aggressive with them. Nobody's tried to put their hands on them. Nobody's tried to do anything to them. On the flip side, one of the dumb goofy bitches came out and yelled in our face at one point. That, that was, we were live on video and we'll make sure we'll take that to court that was like the first interaction that we had with this bitch she walked by and just screamed into the camera whole face in the camera like in you know which typically when you hold cameras or when you hold phones they're they're uh within a close distance to your body right so basically you ran up on somebody screamed in their face and then took off and that was the first interaction that we really had with like any of them then there was the incident where they came out there washing chalk and they had buckets of water and they repeatedly poured the water onto another protester's head you can see him he was drenched he went inside there to tell them, you know, stop dumping water on my head. He went on, he went on live. It was a live video. Stop dumping water on my head. And they called the police and tell him that he was banned from the store. Then, of course, the police can be like, oh, well, do you want to press charges? And that's the whole thing with the fucking police is that they sit there. They know that we don't want police involved. They know that the whole point of all of this is that we don't feel like there is a need for police and that things could be settled outside of the criminal justice system. 
Because to us, the way the system is set up, that's not how justice looks. So they know we don't want to press charges. We know, you know, they know. And we know that the optics of uh, getting old white people locked up is going to push a lot of buttons for some people. Unfortunately, I personally, I'm not speaking for the May 30th Alliance, I'm not speaking for nobody else. I personally feel like, you know, if the, the situation where they dump water on uh, somebody's head or the situation where uh, Leslie was sprayed by the old racist white man down the street, I feel like in them situations, if these old white people had been arrested, there would be uh, a response that uh, was almost unequivocal or would almost be unequivocal to the response of a black man. We've been uh, so desensitized to black men getting in prison, black men getting incarcerated, black folks, you know, getting locked up, arrested on frivolous charges. We become so de desensitized to it. We understand that you know, people might throw some money in or we might call the, the bond fund and, and get him out. But understand that is a traumatic experience. And they know that. They don't want that for them white folks. I'm sure that would be uh, very traumatic for an old white man to go to jail. I'm sure he would be terrified he might get in fucking booking and have a fucking heart attack, like. And of course, the, the mobilization behind that would be a greater mobilization. They would have more resources. They would have, you know, uh, more people. Oh, this poor old man. This poor old man can't be in jail. We got to get this poor old man out of jail. But when it happened to Les oh, oh, Leslie's in jail again. Oh, he don't want to, he don't want to press charges. And they knew that the white couple was in the wrong. That's why they tried to find something to arrest Leslie for. Oh, you walked up on me. Man, get the fuck out of here. You walked up on me. You approached me. He had just been the victim of a crime. He had just got assaulted. And then when he walked up on the police to, you know, how is the situation going to be handled? They just assaulted me. How is this going to go down? They were like, well, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to jail and they're free to go. So we don't subscribe to this idea of justice that the police have. And this is exactly why. So all these incidences speak to uh, the attempt to criminalize us, dehumanize us, criminalize, you know, what we're doing out here and what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, there, we kind of split on, uh, you know, some people feel like it's the system. You don't get a whole lot of wins going up against the system. And some people feel like, you know, we were never in the wrong. We were never in the wrong. We were never wrong to be chalking on the sidewalk. We were never wrong. The protester wasn't wrong for going in there and saying, stop dumping water on my head. Um, you know, we were never wrong. We never vandalized their property. If we had been wrong all the way up until the point that they had got a no contact order, like you, you got to understand not on no cocky shit, but like you got to think who we are. You got to think the charges that have been brought against us, you know, in this last uh, 15 months, the things that people have been arrested for. Do y'all not remember when they came and arrested Leslie for trying to be at the Dollar Tree and they told him that he was banned and come to find out it was just a, you know, quote unquote mistaken identity because apparently the fucking manager in there thinks all black folks look alike. 
and they really arrested this man. And then the charges just disappeared because come to find out she admitted, oh, I thought he was somebody else. So before they even had that situation sorted out, and, you know, the, the manager or whoever was in there, the clerk refused to go get the documentation that he was banned and refused to prove in any kind of way that he was banned, refused to, uh, to uh, speak on the situation that allegedly got him banned. Before any of that happened, before any investigation, he, they arrested Leslie. So for them to have called the police as many times as they have for chalk and for somebody coming in to tell them to stop dumping water on his head while he was riding on the sidewalk with chalk, which all of this revolves around fucking chalk, literally. For them to call the police as many times as they have and nobody get arrested? This is a tactic. This is a tactic because nothing we are doing is in the wrong. Nothing we are doing is illegal. Nothing we are doing is threatening. Nothing we have done is assault. Nothing we have done is battery. Nothing we have done is vandalism. Nothing we have done is, is slander or libel or nothing, nothing. We have not violated their rights. However, they have continuously attempted to violate ours. So when I say it's a tactic, it is a tactic that they went and got no contact orders. They're trying to file subpoenas right now because after they got the no contact orders, somebody came out and uh, wrote with chalk on the ground again. And that's not something that we asked nobody to do. That's not something that we had to uh, tell nobody to do. These videos are live. Anybody can see these videos. Anybody can take the initiative. Okay, I see what they're doing. I see that they're uh, employing this tactic to try and silence black voices, to try and stifle the uh, the attempt to make the public aware. Anybody can take the initiative and come out here and draw on the sidewalk with chalk because it's not illegal. They went and made lies up to get no contact orders, stalking no contact orders, mind you, and we never seen these people anywhere outside of this fucking, pretty much this city block. And the neck, uh, the uh, next block down, maybe. We never seen these people outside of downtown. Never. We don't go to these people's houses. We don't know where these people like to kick it at. We ain't never seen these people at the bar, out at no restaurants. Never, ever, ever have we ever had any fucking interactions with any of these people outside of this protest downtown. So for them, stalking no contact is just fucking outrageous. But the whole point of it was so that they could criminalize what we were doing because now it's not the act of drawing on the, on the sidewalk with chalk. Now it's not the act of interacting with customers. Now it's not the act of videotaping them washing away chalk. Now it's none of that. It's not none of that. Being in proximity to them, being within 50 feet of them, being within, uh, some, some, some paper even said being within their view, which obviously the, the judge didn't, you know, really enforce that or have it, uh, you know, agree with that. But, uh, then it also explicitly says that there's an exception for people who are exercising their rights that it doesn't apply, it's not applicable to people who are exercising their rights. So, you know, that's why some people are, oh, okay, so when we go to court this next time and we have this hearing, it'll all get sorted out. But for six weeks, 
because the initial one lasted three weeks. Actually, no, for seven weeks because we don't go back to court for a month. It's a month before we go back to court. So for seven weeks, the city, the county, these judges, the police worked in conjunction with Rockford Orthopedic to be able to violate our right to protest. There is no doubt in my mind. These people didn't know us. We didn't know them. We didn't know none of their names. I'm sure they knew, you know, who Leslie was, maybe who Ari was, but you know, they don't, they don't know us. They don't know us. They don't have no interaction with us outside of here. They don't know us. So it, it, there's no doubt in my mind that at one point they called the police and the police gave them our names and told them, you know, what you can do for the time being at least, what you can do for a, a, a short period of time is go get this no contact order and that'll keep them from being able to chalk outside your business and, you know, just take it from there. See if you can't get a permanent order in place. And that's all this is. That's all this is. Again, that's all this is. It's not to prevent any type of violence. It's not because they're scared or afraid of us. They're the aggressors. It's also on video, one guy tried to came out, come out and fucking was like trying to jump at somebody. And another person that worked inside there, one of the people that's listed on the fucking uh, no contact order, had to hold him back, was literally holding him back. The person videoing was like, what do you do? You're on camera right now. You're literally on camera. You're on live video right now. And you're trying to lunge at me. You're being held back by people. Like, who is the aggressor? Who needs protecting? Yet and still, they have a no contact order and we're not allowed to exercise our rights on that side of the street. When you allow, uh, or when you as a white person try to tell oppressed people how, when, and where to protest, that's racism, that's white supremacy. You trying to control us, you trying to keep us in line, you trying to uh, force us into this mold that's more acceptable to who you are or to, to you. You're trying to um, not be uncomfortable. When the reality is a protest, a demonstration, if done right, is going to make you uncomfortable because it's going to force you to confront those uh, microaggressions or even macroaggressions that you exhibit. So when we were uh, saying, or people were saying, people were writing that the store was racist, I'm sure it did make them uncomfortable. I'm sure they did feel some type of way about it because it was forcing them to confront the fact that they have repeatedly weaponized the police against black and brown people for literally riding on the sidewalk with chalk. And initially the chalk messages had nothing, nothing to do with them. They even wrote uh, in the addendum, that they, they wrote slurs against us in chalk, like, fuck the police. Fuck the police, the, that's not a slur. And it's not even directed at you. It's very much in the fucking message. Fuck the police. So it's obviously directed at the police. So for them to, oh, they're, they're uh, targeting us. There's been chalk all up and down this sidewalk. Justice for, you know, justice for Mikey Guzman, justice for Mike Sago, justice for Demetrius Bennett, justice for Javon Fresco and Tyrus Jones and, and, uh, and Jose Gonzalez Jr., Faust and Guaytigo. Fuck the police, fuck the pigs, ACAB. And all these other stores, all these other stores down here, all these other stores, all these other stores, all these other stores. And when I say all these other stores, I mean all of these other stores, all the way down across the bridge. All of these other stores. 
with the exception of Minglewood. The woman did come out the one time and throw a bucket on wa of water on some shit. And that was one time for the most part, you know, aside from that one time, all these other stores just go on about their fucking business because it's chalk on a public sidewalk. But these racist motherfuckers right here keep wanting to show they fucking ass and make it apparent to every fucking body that they obviously feel some type of guilty about the shit that's going on. So they're trying to help cover it up. They're trying to get it to stop. They want to let it be known so bad that they do not support black lives. That they do not care for black lives. That they do not care for black voices. That they do not care to listen to the oppressed. That they do not care. They want to make it very clear that they stand as far away from us as humanly possible that they don't stand for the same things that we stand for, that they completely support the police, that they're completely okay with white supremacy, with upholding that system, that they're completely okay with funding the police, giving them raises, giving them bonuses, giving them OT. They want to let it be known, and it's even meta metaphorical, they're across they standing across from us. They're not standing with us. They're not standing next to us. They said, y'all stand over there, the fuck away from us, and we'll be over here, enjoying our privilege. They wanna make that very clear. They wanna let that be known where they stand. As far away from us, they wanted the the, the perimeter, not the perimeter, sorry, the, uh, the distance that we had to stay. It was uh, modified to 50 feet. They wanted it to be, originally they wanted it to be 300. Then when we went back to court, they asked for it to be 100. So they want to make sure that we know and that everybody knows that they want to be, they want to stand, they want to take a stand, they want to be as far away from us as humanly possible. They want absolutely nothing to do with the message, the awareness. They want nothing to do with uh, listening and uplifting black voices or oppressed voices, ethnic voices, minority voices. They want nothing to do with that. Stay the fuck away from us, they said. So their, their tactic, hand in hand with the police that they've tried to weaponize against us, was to go get these no contact orders, lie to get them, prolong the amount of time that they uh, are in effect for as long as the court will possibly allow ask for continuances, not show up to court, and then refile them the next day. Keep it going, keep it going, as long as they possibly can. Because they're trying to catch somebody. They're trying to catch somebody. The second somebody walks across the street to go use the bathroom, or the second somebody's uh, walking down the street from one location, to another location, the second somebody uh, goes over there to write with chalk, the second somebody does anything to violate that order, anything to violate that order, then they finally, they put up cameras. They didn't have cameras over there. They put up fucking cameras. The second, the second, they had them out here at like one o'clock in the morning, midnight that one night for people drawn with chalk. The second somebody violates that order, they're going to be on the phone with the police trying to get somebody arrested. 
because they finally found a way to criminalize drawing on the sidewalk with chalk. They finally found a way to criminalize spreading a message that they don't agree with on their side of the street, in front of their store, in close proximity to their store. They finally found a way to criminalize that. And as long as that no contact order is in place, that's criminal activity. As long as they prolong it and extend it and, and uh, keep you know, pushing out the dates and, and keep it in effect, that's criminal activity to draw on the sidewalk with chalk. That's criminal activity to engage with community members on that side of the street. It's criminal activity to spread awareness. It's criminal activity to demand justice for these people that were murdered by the police. This criminal activity. Up until it goes to hearing and it all gets sorted out. That's criminal activity. The pettiest shit. The pettiest shit. They don't fear for their fucking lives. They're racist. That's it, point blank period. It ain't got nothing to do with their safety. It's got a whole lot to do with their fucking image. They're having to confront the fact that they're racist and that makes them uncomfortable. They don't want to do it. So they're, uh, the, the solution for them is to not work through their microaggressions or work through their macroaggressions, overcome their racism. Their solution is to bury it in the, in the very system that we're calling out for being racist. Their first call, the first thing they do, is weaponize the very system that we're calling out for being racist. What do you call somebody who uses the very system that the oppressed people are calling out as racist against black and brown people? Who does that? Fucking racist. So obviously they're fucking racist. They don't want to fucking deal with that. They don't want to, uh, they don't want to acknowledge that. So now we're here. But I know y'all been listening to me for a while. They're done washing the chalk away. These guys are probably coming into work sometime soon. I really don't feel like the police being called on me because I'm sitting here recording in the front of their building from across the street and talking. So I'm gonna let y'all go. But we outside.